Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Kai here from Tic Tac Toe and today we are going to talk about one of Samsung's very smart monitors, the 32 inch M5. And here is the review. All right, you might be seeing that I'm plugged with my earphones on uh, because I do need to monitor my audio. Well, you know, one man band, I need to monitor my audio, I need to monitor my own video and other things because that's just part of being uh, a video producer or content producer in YouTube. So the M5 monitor is part of the M series that Samsung had made available. Uh, in terms of pricing and specs, this is the base model, all right? The one that we are reviewing today, this is the cheapest of the lot of the three. Yes, there are two more uh, into the M series. And there is something unique about this monitor and it claims to be a productivity hub. Now, what that means is that you can pretty much do simple productivity work on this monitor alone, standalone, without ever hooking any of your PCs, any of your laptops onto the monitor to work. Now, if that sounds familiar, that is because there are already uh, devices, something similar, but not totally similar uh, as the M5. What you have been familiar with is probably something which is called an AIO or an all-in-one PC. Uh, let me give you some reference, uh, some examples of what AIO's devices are. Some popular ones are uh, the iMac, the Dell, Inspirion 24, uh, or the HP all-in-one series. So I have been using this monitor for 14 days already and Yes, there are things that the monitor does really well and there are things that, well, it doesn't do really well. Let me break it down for you. All right, let's first talk about what it does well. Now, this is a 32-inch monitor. So with that, of course, it has very good real estate. And the bezels that you can see over here, they are rather slim, thin, and it's causing very uh, low distraction. And by default, the aspect ratio on this monitor is 16 by 9, but you can change to 21 by 9. Now, this is also great if you want to be playing games like uh, first-person shooting games, or if maybe you are playing some sports games such as FIFA 21, or maybe, what is that football, very popular football game, oh, Madden, Madden football. Yes, because Playing it on a 21 by 9 you can literally see more of the field, which might give you a slight advantage. So for any monitors that comes with this size, 32 inch, I think it's a very good size. Alright, what else does it do well? Let's see, uh, it actually works well as a TV. Now, Samsung somehow included a, where is it, a remote control with this monitor. And if you look at the remote control, the layout and the buttons, they are similar to any of the new or modern Samsung TVs that you can find out in the market. Uh, you've got the volume up button, you've got the home button, the source button, the play button, the directional button, as well as three shortcut buttons, which includes all of our favorite uh, streaming platform, Netflix, Prime Video. And the last one, you can hit it and a browser will just pop up so you can do your Google searches or whatever that you want to search on. So yes, remote control, similar to those that's found on modern Samsung smart TVs. Now more about the apps. Yes, there are apps within the monitor. So there are already native apps installed in the entertainment portion of the monitor. You just need to launch any of these and do your usual login into the apps and of course you can just start watching them. Uh, you've got Netflix, you've got Disney Plus, you've got YouTube, which you can watch this video on. And of course, any of my videos on. And while you're doing that, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if the app of your choice isn't included in the list of the native apps that has really been installed, all you need to do is go to the app store within the monitor. Yes, there is an app store inside this monitor. So all you need to do is just search for an app and just download it like any uh, smart devices or smartphones that you are already familiar with. 
And speaking of Samsung Smart TV, if you are familiar with the entire uh, operating system, with the interface, the UI, this will make you right at home. And the audio on the speakers of this monitor isn't all too bad as well. And today we are going to review another Martian gear chair. And this time around, the Starfighter. And here is the review. Firstly, I just want to thank Martian Gear for sending us. They do get loud. Uh, the UI and the UX is totally similar to all of those modern Samsung Smart TV that you can find in the market. And if you were to actually use this monitor as a TV, uh, rather than you using it as your productivity work, you might actually forget that this monitor, this is actually not a TV. Yeah, it will have that effect. All right, let's talk a bit about what it does not do well. Now, firstly, this monitor, it uses VA panel, which means the colors on the panel is not as vibrant and as accurate, uh, especially if you are a creative who deals with a lot of photo editing, video editing, you know, you are the one who plays with a lot of colors. This monitor will not be for you. However, it does have uh, HDR10, but it lacks sRGB and there isn't any DCI coverage. So yes, color might be a problem if you want to get it as accurate as possible. And as for me, someone who has been using an IPS panel monitor uh, for a while, and with of course very nice color coverage, and when switching to this monitor, I could notice that the colors on the M5, this monitor, is a tad washed out. But don't get me wrong, images do look good, colors still looks good, uh, videos, they still look good. It's just that you can see a difference if you're very used to IPS panels. And if you were to put side by side with an IPS panel that I have a vertical monitor over here on my right, as well as a monitor, the M5 over here. If you were to compare it side by side, you can see the difference of uh, how vibrant the color is on the IPS panel as compared to the M5. Well, on the refresh rate, it does handle 60 Hertz. So not too bad for video playing or for gaming. But yeah, 60 Hertz, it is not 120 Hertz. So if you're a competitive gamer, again, this is not for you. I also do wish that uh, instead of this monitor being in the native 1080p Full HD, it might come in 2K instead. I think that would be nice. It is already 2021 and the base resolution for screens, uh, I think it is not 1080 anymore. It has scaled up a little bit. Well, 2K is definitely for me as a base resolution. All right, more on using this monitor for your productivity work. Now, on the back of the monitor, there are two USB 2.0 ports, which you can hook up any of your peripherals, such as your mouse, your keyboard, and you can launch, get this, Office 365 on this monitor, again, without any of uh, your PCs or your laptops plugged in. So yes, I was testing to see whether or not it is feasible to do your productivity work because uh, my office, we run full on Office 365. So initially I thought that Samsung would install the mobile app version of Office 365 on this monitor. You know, the ones that is found on your Android phones. Uh, those are good mobile apps, by the way. But on closer inspection, uh, it actually uses the web version of Office 365. Now, the concept is actually not bad because technically you can run almost all of the Office 365 apps on the web. But because the OS on the monitor, it is not Android, it is Tizen instead. It is the one that is found on all of the modern smart Samsung TVs, that one. So things are not really optimized, especially things that are run on the browser. And if you were to open more than one document on many, many tabs of the browser, you then begin to experience stutterings. Uh, things just begin to not run as smooth as possible. Uh, I am quite sure that the processor on the back of the monitor is able to run some things decent enough. It is just that because the entire thing is based on Tizen architecture, 
uh, yes, it's not as optimized as anyone would like it to be. If you were to take these things into account and into your consideration, and taking 2021 as a big reference here, it does feel very substandard. So overall, I don't think that it is suited for productivity. Uh, it won't make you be more productive. So on this portion, I'm giving it a hard no. Now on the flip side, the tables will turn if you were to use a DeX compatible Samsung phone with the monitor. Uh, what do I mean? Now, Samsung flagship phones, such as uh, the Note 10 onwards, they have this feature which is called Samsung DeX. Now what DeX does is that it will turn your Samsung phone into a mini PC. Now because of this monitor being a wireless smart monitor and that is where the magic happens. So if you were to turn on DeX on both your phone and your monitor, you can literally do very good productivity stuff productively. Now, taking into consideration that the setup is wireless, the entire experience is actually really good. Now, things become very smooth as compared to if you are running uh, MS365 on the browser of the monitor. It really feels that you are running on an actual PC. So if you do have a Samsung phone, a flagship phone uh, with DeX, of course, and this is how your go-to setup should be. And if you do not want to use your PC or laptop to hook onto your monitor, this monitor, well, just use DeX. Okay, the other thing that I think the monitor does not do well is that Samsung priced this monitor a little bit hefty. It currently retails for SGD628. I will be okay if this monitor is priced in the 400 SGD range. That is fair. Now, on the other hand, why I think they are pricing it that high is to justify that this monitor is really a monitor TV hybrid. Okay, overall thoughts. I do really like the idea and the concept of an all-in-one monitor. I, I just wish that they place a more powerful processor on the monitor instead of the one that we have right now to make things a little bit more snappier. I was also wondering if instead of running this monitor on a Tizen OS, they could just put an Android OS instead. I think probably things will get more optimized, no? The Samsung DeX, it works brilliantly. I love that. I'm also imagining a scenario where I go to the office, just bringing my phone, turning on DeX, and using the combination of the phone and the monitor to do my work instead of bringing around my laptop or hooking up a PC. I mean, if your work do require you to do mostly word processing or using the web browser majority of the time and not requiring you to use the heavier resource apps such as Premiere Pro, uh, Photoshop, Power BI, AutoCAD, etc., then this will definitely change the game. So imagine the IT department, instead of buying laptops every four to five years now, all they need to do is to purchase a Samsung M series monitor and perhaps offset the staff's purchase of Samsung phones. Hmm? Maybe just cover 50% of the retail price of the phone. That might work. But whatever it is, I am stoked for the future of work and I can definitely see Samsung to be at the forefront uh, if they do continue to come up with such smart devices such as the M5 monitors. Alright guys, that's it for the review. Uh, if you do enjoy this video, you know what to do. Give it a like. Give it a like. Hit the like button. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification button to be notified on a future video that we might post. Alright guys, that's it. Uh, Singapore COVID cases are rising up again. Do stay indoors and please, please stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.